Hello, mathematicians. My name is Matt DeSorbo, covering the algebra series for Skew the Script. Today, we'll be discussing extrapolation and its associated dangers, specifically on the prevalence of obesity in America. Without further ado, let's skew it. Welcome in to Algebra Lesson 2.5 in our Skew the Script series. Today, we'll be ex discussing extrapolation. Here's a global map of the obesity rates in 1975. You can see all the various countries here. Lighter colors means less obesity prevalence. Darker colors means more obesity. If we compare this to 2016, we see an alarming trend. There are much, much darker colors in 2016 versus 1975. In fact, America is among the highest rates in the world in terms of obesity. And this is something that Naturally, many public health officials are concerned about, and much ink has been spilled over this issue. For example, um, this article was published in 2008 by a team of public health researchers from Johns Hopkins and the University of Pennsylvania. We can pull out a, well, first, this is a very popular article cited more than 900 times in other research, that's as of 2021, and we can isolate this quote from the article, which says, in 15 years, by the year 2022, 80% of American adults would be overweight or obese, and the prevalence would reach 100% in 40 years by the year 2048. Is there anything about that quote that sticks out to you? For me, it's the 100% in 40 years by the year 2048. And that leads us to our key analysis. Will 100% of Americans, all of Americans, be overweight by the year 2048? If you'd like to follow along, check out the link below. Feel free to print or download today's guided notes so you can work through the video with us. So let's return to that article and think about their analysis. Um, they essentially uh, constructed this data or have this data set with the x-axis of years, the y-axis of percent of US population that is overweight. The data is from 1976 to 2004. And naturally, the trend looks linear and positive. As time went on, the population of uh, percent of the population that was overweight increased, and it looks like it increased in a linear fashion. Indeed, we can draw our linear model, our line of best fits, and it looks like it fits the data reasonably well. The highest observed value in this data set was 65% overweight, which is important to note. And now we want to kind of estimate what is going to happen in the future, because linear models can be very useful for making different sorts of predictions. However, as you can kind of see here, the predictions that are used are extending the line of best fit, the linear model beyond our data. In this case, we are looking at when uh, the prevalence of obesity will hit 100% every individual. And as we saw in the cited article, that is estimated according to this linear model, to be 2048 on the x-axis. So again, the statement made, 2048, all Americans, 100% will be overweight. What's going on here? That sounds like a sort of interesting claim for someone to make. Well, what's happening here is extrapolation, and that's using your model to make predictions outside of the domain of your data. And remember, domain means x values. So again, our observed data is only between 1976 and 2004. We don't have data beyond that. And any predictions beyond these years is extrapolation. We're using a domain and X value that's not within our data set. Extrapolation can certainly be dangerous for the simple reason that the trend may not continue. This linear model may not continue into the future. For example, the trend might look something like this. And this curve model is actually more reasonable since it's unlikely that every single person, 100% of the population would become overweight over time. Let's switch gears a little bit and start to think about extrapolation in a very different context um, that also has a very uh, large consequences. So you may be familiar with the Challenger, which was a rocket that took off on January 28th, 1986, uh, took off from Florida with a crew of seven aboard, including a teacher, and just 73 se seconds into the flight, uh, tragedy struck and unfortunately the shuttle broke apart and sadly no crew survived. Um, much has been uh, discussed about what happened on uh, the Challenger. Um, most importantly, perhaps most importantly, is that the morning of the launch was unusually cold, 28 degrees Fahrenheit, and it created ice on the launch pad as you can see here. NASA uh, decided to proceed with the flight anyways. Um, what happened was O-rings, which are seals that sort of fit the rocket together, um, were broken in the cold temperature. 
they leaked fuel and then the leaked fuel caused the explosion. You can see in the picture on the left here, black smoke um, from the O-ring failure at the start of the launch and then the catastrophic and, and terrible uh, explosion in the, in the photo on the right. Here is a, a chart of the outside temperatures and the O-ring damage on the y-axis, which higher is, is more damage, uh, damage index. So we want that to be low. This is from prior launches of the Challenger, since it had many different practice runs. Each dot represents one launch. Um, and we see a clear trend. Lower temperatures tend to have more damage on uh on the, the O-rings in the Challenger. However, the temperatures on launch day were between 20 degrees and 30 degrees. So discussion question A, these 20 degrees to 30 degrees span is outside of our sample. It's outside of our domain, it's extrapolation. And the discussion question for you is, is it responsible to extrapolate to lower temperatures and stop the launch? Why or why not? Discussion question B, in general, in what type of situations should, should extrapolation be allowed? We've seen a couple of situations with predicting the prevalence of um, obesity, or we've also seen uh, predicting the performance of O-rings in different temperatures. So kind of use that knowledge and answer in what type of situation should extrapolation be used or avoided. That's all for today. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time on Skew the Script.